Hey guys, it's Melanie. Today I'm going to be sharing my skincare goals for 2020. Um, I am someone who is personally a very goal-oriented person. Um, at the start of each year, I like to sit down and write down different goals that I have for myself in my personal life. Um, so uh, things that I want to work on in uh, my personal relationships, things that I want to work on just within myself, things that I want to work on for my job, my day job, so my business, um, things that I want to work on with my daughter, um, my husband, um, you know, things like spending more time with friends, just that kind of stuff. I am someone who, when January comes around, for whatever reason, that is the specific time where I get really motivated to kind of do a little bit of self-reflection, see what I think I need to work on, and then take some serious steps to make those things happen. If you have never been a resolution person um, or a goal making type of person, I have to admit that in my younger years I was never this way. It's just that I've since I've gotten into my 30s and now 40s that um, I really started reflecting at the start of each year and trying to make some positive changes. Um, I would definitely encourage you to think about doing it. Um, you know, not everybody needs to make a million resolutions, and it's not even necessarily resolutions that I'm making. They really just are goals. So these are things that, very specific, concrete things that I want to achieve. And I will usually think about the steps that I need to take to get there as well. So there's a lot of things that I have been thinking about, and the there's a few things that I want to share with you guys. Skincare, I thought would be a good one to share on my channel because I thought that might be of interest. Um, towards the end of the month, I will also share my um, health goals for the year as well. Um, I have shared uh, my health journey in previous videos on my channel, so I thought that might be kind of applicable. But um, yeah, so let's let's talk about skincare goals for 2020. Um, I this does not include basic things like washing my makeup off every single night, um, making sure that I am using. Uh, chemical exfoliators. It doesn't really include things like that. Things that I have already been doing, great. Uh, continue doing those things. <laughs> These are just some specific things that are new that I need to focus on, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. These are mostly new things. <laughs> Just looking at it, there's some kind of random things that I jotted down, but yeah, essentially, uh, these are just new things that I need to start focusing on because I am noticing that these are things that I maybe have neglected in the past out of either A, laziness, or two, um, laziness. It's, a lot of this is just pure laziness. <laughs> I need to step it up. So um, let's just get through it. Um, I have my list here on my little steel uh notepad or post it. Does anybody know what steel is? Comment down below. <laughs> if you have a crafty man in your life, you probably know what steel is. Um, anyway, so the first thing, and this is really probably the most important thing. It's the first thing I wrote down and it was just to continue being consistent. So Again, it's just all of those basic everyday things that I have been doing for quite some time now, but continuing to do them and not getting lazy. <laughs> so um, with the new things that I'm adding in, yes, I am adding a little bit of time to my routine each day, but it's not going to increase the time by like a substantial amount. So. Um, continue doing what I have been doing because at 41, I am very happy with the way that my skin looks. Um, I couldn't be more pleased. I feel like my skin looks younger at 41 than it did at 31. I mean, 10 years have gone by and honestly, I think I look younger now than I did back then. And um, if you look back at some of my older videos from 
gosh, I think, I think in May I will have been doing YouTube videos for 10 years. So some of my older videos are pretty cringe worthy. Um, it's really hard not to go through and delete all those, <laughs> but um, they are up. If you're curious, you can go see what my skin looked like 10 years ago. So much better now. My pores are so much smaller. Um, everything is so much smoother. Um, I am not getting clogged pores nearly as often. Um, I really don't deal with many breakouts. It's, it's just good happens right now. So I need to remain consistent. All right. Second, um, and this came about because last night I went through and organized my skincare backup stash and I was like, oh, there's a lot of stuff in here. Um, I buy a lot of stuff. I buy a lot of stuff because I, when new things come out, I am just so intrigued and I would just want, I want to try all the things, but here's the thing. Um, I need to actually use up a lot of what I have before I start buying more stuff. So I am committing to, and I really hope I can do this. This is going to be probably the toughest one for me, a no buy on skincare for at least three months. So January, February, March, I am going to try really hard not to buy any new skincare. I have plenty of stuff back there in that closet to keep me busy and I'm going to focus on using those products. The one exception that I did make was if, them, if something pops up on my Octoly store and if I apply to the brand and they approve, I'm going to allow for that. But as far as me going out and blowing like 150 bucks at Ulta or Sephora or whatever, I'm not going to do it. Uh, so three months. Hold me to it, guys. We'll see how that goes. Um, all right. There are two specific areas that I have committed to starting to actually treat. Um, they are areas that I have ignored in the past. And I kind of started with one of the areas a little bit later this year. Well, I'm recording this on New Year's Eve. So when you're watching it, it would be last year in 2019. Um, the first is my neck. Um, I used to just ignore my neck for the most part. <laughs> and I have really committed um, to now treating my neck area just as diligently as I do my face. Because here's the thing. I see a lot of women who have taken really good care of their face and have ignored their neck. And it looks like two different ages, like maybe 30 up here and 65 on the neck. Like, do not ignore your neck. Do not ignore putting SPF on your neck. Do not ignore exfoliating your neck from time to time. You probably need to be a little bit more gentle. Um, I would say that my neck meat um, is a little bit more sensitive than my face, which is not sensitive at all. But um, yeah, this area is a little bit more sensitive on me personally. So um, I definitely have to uh, be a little bit more careful but I need to start treating that area. It's really important and I don't wanna be one of those women that has two different ages going on between this and this. So when I say my neck, that also actually includes the decollete. So this area over here, just working more with some gentle exfoliation, um, using retinol, <laughs> um, not tretinoin, but just over the counter retinol type products on my neck and my decollete. Um, moisturizing this area really well, um, just taking good care of it. Another area, I have been really good about using eye creams and you don't necessarily need an eye cream. If your face cream is formulated in a really good way, you can actually use whatever you're using on your face underneath your eye area. But I'm just personally kind of a sucker for eye creams. Um, I just tend to like the texture of them better and I just, I just, I like buying eye cream. It's fine. Um, you don't have to do that though, but I'm really good about treating this area. I'm not so good about treating the actual like lid and like eye area here, like this, <laughs> where my makeup goes. I have been ignoring that and it is starting to show, to show some signs of age and Again, I see a lot of women who have some great 
facial skin and then when it comes to their eyelids you can tell that they are not treating that area so mostly what I'm going to be focusing on is just putting whatever eye cream I'm using here um, being careful because you don't want to use too much and cause it to run into your eyes and deal with like watery angry eyes but treating this area as well um, with my different eye creams so I need to start doing that that's a huge thing um, it's something that I have not done in the past at all and it's starting to show at this point and so I'm gonna do something about it um, also I wrote down here my panning challenge um, I believe you will have already seen that video by the time that this video goes up so I'll link it down below if I can um, I'm doing another panning challenge in 2020 um, I found that to be super helpful for skincare in 2019 and I want to do it again because I do have a lot of products and I just want to focus on finishing some specific things and um, yeah there's no reason for me to not finish the items that I have in that challenge because most of them honestly are at least halfway done at this point some things are even past the halfway point and there's no reason to let those products sit there there's plenty of surface area here now to treat <laughs> with the addition of the neck um so i can get through these products no doubt um uh here's here's an update for you guys um in 2019 i had penny over at pen smith skincare who is if you are subscribed to her you know that she is an esthetician um, so I had her treat my sebaceous hyperplasia and by the way the ones that she treated have not come back and I think she treated them in the was it late spring early summer I can't even remember now but anyway she treated them with her plasma pen and um, it worked beautifully um, the spots flattened out and they have not come back however in the meantime <laughs> I have had just a couple of little new guys pop up so my goal is to go see Penny uh, probably early kind of this year to have her treat the new ones that popped up before they get any larger and she's very reasonable with her pricing and so I'm gonna go see Penny I'm gonna have her treat those spots it'll be a worthwhile investment and um, it's just a week of having some scabs on my face, but it's totally worth it because I love how smooth my skin is otherwise. Um, honestly, after she did the initial treatment, I was blown away with how well it worked, how easy it was, how painless it was, and how quickly it healed. Um, so I'm very, very pleased, and I am definitely making it a goal to go and have her treat the little guys that just popped up. And... Um, as they pop up, I will continue to have her treat them because there's no no permanent scarring from it. It's very easy, it's pretty inexpensive, and I like not having them on my face. Sebaceous, sebaceous hyperplasia, if you are new to my channel, is um, it's essentially like a clogged oil duct, but it's, it's not a pimple, it's not something you can pop. Um, it's a skin colored bump, there's no like, I hate this word pus there's no like pus underneath it there's nothing for you to pop there is nothing that you can do at home to get rid of them you have to go have them treated either by a dermatologist or by an esthetician do not try to like dig them out or whatever you think you can do at home just save some money up go get it treated the plasma pen worked great for me I know that some people have tried electrocautery in the past that was a little bit scary for me because that tends to leave some scarring um, the plasma pen did not but do your research and um, see what the best treatment course is for you and then go have a professional take care of it so uh, I'm making it a goal there's like one right here and then there's like I think one or two like really small ones that are just starting out on my forehead so I'll have her treat those um I kind of started this a, a little while ago but I, I did start tretinoin and um, my goal for the new year is to be very consistent with the tretinoin that I incorporated um, back in late November um, so I've been on it for about a month and a half now and it's going really well 
and I feel like my skin is adjusting very nicely and I, I want to continue it and yes I will be doing an update video for you guys it'll probably be sometime at the maybe end of February beginning of March where I do sort of my first update um, to tell you how it's going um, what I'm using what I'm using to mitigate some of the dryness that can happen when you initially start tretinoin all that jazz uh, we'll talk about it then so but my goal is to remain very consistent with the tretinoin and um, I'm excited to see what it can do for me by the end of 2020 so um, and then the last one is uh, and this is for like several different areas of my life but more water <laughs> more water will also be talked about in the like health goals video that I do at the end of the month but I do personally notice that when I have an increased water intake that my skin looks a lot better um, and I don't really I don't need to drink like a gallon of water a day personally for me as long as I get somewhere around like 20 to 30 ounces of water like that's typically a decent amount for me where I start to see some good changes in my skin but obviously the more the better without crazy overdoing it but I do need to drink kind of a minimum amount of water each day which for myself I'm setting somewhere around probably 30 ounces as the minimum and then I can kind of go up from there if I want um, but that has to be the minimum when I do that I notice that my skin is pretty darn clear it looks a lot more plumped and hydrated just from the inside um, and there's all sorts of other benefits from drinking water so I have kind of a minimum amount goal each day but especially since I'm going to be working out a lot harder now I should probably actually double that um, since unfortunately <laughs> be sweating a lot more with this new workout regimen that I have planned for myself so um but yeah the water is also for uh just my skin in general just keeping all of this hydrated so those are my goals those are my skincare goals I feel like they are pretty achievable I feel like these are all things that um are going to be easy for me to incorporate into my existing routine um again there will be a little bit of added time in that i'm now adding this section to my skincare routine but it'll probably be like an extra minute so not a big deal totally worth it i think it's going to make a big difference and i'm excited about it so if you have any skincare goals for yourself in 2020 whether you are just starting out and you are starting out with the basic i'm actually going to wash my face every single night <laughs> or I'm actually gonna put on a moisturizer, or I'm going to start using chemical exfoliants, whatever it is, put it down below in the comments section and hopefully we can hold each other accountable. I will certainly be updating you guys. Um, maybe we'll do like an update in June, halfway through the year. We'll kind of talk about how things are going so far with the goals and um, if I want to add anything else at that point. If all of this stuff becomes really easy for me, then maybe there will be room to make additional changes. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I'm going to give myself the first six months though to see how far I get and then we'll just kind of go from there. So um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions and um, thank you so much for taking the time to watch. Please subscribe if you are new and hit the notification bell to be notified of new videos and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye.